presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Maureen O'Hara in Together Again. Producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, as one of our 20 greats, we have a delightful comedy from Columbia Pictures. It's Together Again. The story of a woman torn between love and her career as a mayor of a small town. And as our star, one of the real beauties of Hollywood, as well as a fine actress, Maureen O'Hara. It's late spring afternoon in Brookhaven, Vermont. And in the office of the Brookhaven Eagle... Editor Buchanan looks out the window. The object of his disgusted gaze is a statue. Ah, uh, look at that eyesore, Purse. Jonathan Crandall's statue. As if it wasn't stupid enough putting it up in the first place. But no, every year they got to have memorial service. Well, folks thought a heap of Jonathan Mort. The first thing I'm going to do when I'm mayor of this town is get rid of that cast iron insult. Hey, except we got a mayor. Folks think a heap of Mrs. Crandall, too. They can think a heap of her without having to elect her mayor, can't they? Just because her husband was. Some folks say she's been a better mayor even than Jonathan was. Yeah, but she'll slip first. Women always do. And when she does, I'll be around. Diana's right, Father Crandall. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Why didn't you attend the memorial services? You know very well why. My arthritis. Your arthritis. You just didn't want to go. Now, for heaven's sake, don't cry. First thing you know, you'll get thin again. I'm perfectly willing to be healthy, Grandfather. But if certain persons are always upsetting one's glands, how can one? That girl. And it's like living with a box of matches. I'm worried, Father. About her? Why, Diana's crazy about you. No, and it makes me feel so terribly responsible. Even more than as if Diana were my own child. I don't suppose you know what I mean by that. Of course I do. You're not my own child, and look how I worry about you. Me? For heaven's sake, why? Because it hurts my soul to see a, a, a beautiful dish like you wasted on a neurotic stepchild. A hunk of statue in a fussy old town like Brookhaven. <laughs> why, darling... Hasn't it ever occurred to you that I might like my life? Why? Well, being there keeps me busy. And I have Diana and you, you miserable old reprobate. I can think of a couple of things you haven't got. What? Well, you're a widow. And you, you know, darling, you amuse me. You can't bear to see a woman living alone and liking it. No man can. And I'm perfectly happy. Happy my foot. Oh, mercy. Look at that rain. Why don't you stop living Jonathan's life and live your own? Jonathan departed this veil of tears five years ago, and I say it's time we let him rest in oh, peace. Oh, Father. I know my son, and I tell you, Anne, he's as irritated with you wherever he is as I am. <laughs> well, when you hear from him to that effect, you let me know, will you? Uh, well. Now help me close some windows. It's now, yes, hello. Yeah, hello, hello, Mort. Mort, is that you, Mort? Uh, well, of course it's me. What's the matter with you, Perry? Well, guess what, Mort? A lightning bolt just hit the statue. What? A bolt of lightning just hit Jonathan Crandall's statue. Knocked his head off clean as a whistle. First, are you sure? Oh, no, Mort. He's standing there now with the rain pouring down his neck. <laughs> Nathan, stop the presses. We got a new story for page one. <laughs> You told me to shut up till I heard from Jonathan. Don't be ridiculous, Father. Just because the statue happened to be struck by lightning... Happened to be? You don't suppose it was accidental, do you? Jonathan pitched that bolt of lightning himself. Now, will you quit lying to yourself and start having some fun? <laughs> Mort Buchanan seems to be having lots of fun. 
Have you seen the morning paper? Sure, I've seen it. Brookhaven Eagle demands removal of headless eyesore from Crandall Park. Well, he's right. Nonsense. We'll have the statue repaired. We'll do no such thing. I've waited five years, and so has Jonathan, to get rid of that doggone statue. Excuse me, Mr. Oh. Crandall, about Mr. Buchanan. Please. Well, I can't see him now, Jesse. I'll just be a minute, Mayor Crandall. I just want to find out if you call the Department of Sanitation about hauling away that statue. Over my dead body, they'll haul away that statue? It's a public nuisance. Oh, it is, is it? Even without a head, my son's a better man than you are. Not ah. one minute ago, Father, you said... I don't care what I said. If Buchanan wants it hauled away, it stays. It certainly does. The statue is going to be repaired, Mr. Buchanan. Put my father's head back on again? Oh, it's the most gruesome thing I ever heard of. Oh, Mother, I'd feel every stitch, personally. ha, <laughs> ha. Well, uh, you, Maud Buchanan. Diana, honey, what is it that you want? Why, a new statue, naturally. Why not? A bigger one, too. Buchanan, the Crandall family is giving Brookhaven a brand new statue of Jonathan. <laughs> Your bag's on the train, eh? You're certainly anxious to get rid of me, aren't you? Oh, goodness sake, you'll be back tomorrow night. Running off to New York to interview a sculptor. Really? You have the address. Remember, his name's George Corday, and the telegram said to be there at 6 o'clock. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, uh, buy yourself a new hat, too. Well, what's the matter with this hat? It looks like a hat. When women start wearing hats that look like hats, they're on the way out. At your age, you ought to be on your way in. In what? Buy a new hat and find out. Studio, eh? Studio. Oh. Mr. Corday, Mr. Cor... Uh, <clears throat> so... oh. I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm sorry. I must have been dozing. Uh, I've never seen you before, have I? Why, no, i I'm, I'm not sure. Clothes make such a difference. What? Well, there she is, the statue here. As you can see, it's all finished except for a certain line. Oh, right here. I hope you've got it. Now, just a minute. If you've got minute. the curve I'm looking for, fine. If you haven't, I'll have to get another model. But you don't understand. Please, I have an appointment with a small-town mayor at 6 o'clock, and it's quite possible he wouldn't understand a beautiful model running around. Really? And why not? Have you ever met a small-town mayor? They have no sense of humor, and they're always out of shape. Well, I hope you have a sense of humor, because you're going to need one. Why? Because I am Mayor Crandall. Oh, well, well, I'm not going to apologize, you know. You're a fraud. You have no business to have mayor inside and such a beautiful outside. Mr. Corday, may we discuss the business at hand? Oh, certainly. Thank you. Uh, I have some photographs here of the late Mayor Crandall. I thought they might help you. Oh. Fine-looking man. Thank you. Your father? My husband. No. Why not? Well, no reason, no reason at all. Uh, now then, let's make a few notes. Uh, how long were you married to him? Five years. His but... age when he married you? Forty-two, but I don't see... Well, what a very character... important fact. A man who waits until he's forty-two to marry must have definite characteristics. I was his second wife. Two wives. Mm -hmm. Any children? Yes, one by his first wife. Now, really, I don't Mayor see... Mayor Crandall, the... it's simply that I need to know the man. This is a professional interview, and I... Wish you'd conduct it as such. You wish I now, would. Now, just tell me the things that you're aware of. Well, my husband was a Crandall. The Crandalls founded Brookhaven. There's a certain dignity that goes with such tradition. Very dignified. Hmm? Affectionate. I beg your pardon. Well, we'll place a question mark after that, shall we? Now, the fact that you're still Mrs. Crandall tells me that you've never remarried. Have you entertained the idea of remarrying? I have never entertained the idea of remarrying. Uh -huh. I'll erase the question mark after affectionate. <laughs> there. Now, you see how one thing leads to another? Oh, excuse me. 
Mr. Corday. Yes? I'm Thorne. Muriel Thorne. The agency thinks I have what you want. Oh, uh, Miss Thorne. Uh, you don't mind, Mrs. Crandall, if I... Uh... Oh, not at all. Uh, the dressing room's back there on the right, Miss Thorne. Be right with you. Now then, Mrs. Crandall, uh, how long has your husband been dead? Five years. You've been a widow for five years? Well, naturally. On the contrary, there's nothing natural about it. Uh, Mayor Crandall, something made you nervous. You you seem a little... Uh, it's that model. Does she just come out when she's ready? Oh, oh, perhaps you'd rather she wouldn't? <laughs> well, I'm not exactly used to it. Oh, how thoughtless of me. Well, it won't take me a second. <laughs> That's right. Either she's got it or she hasn't. Well, I'll see you in the morning, Mr. Corday. Thanks. Ten o'clock. Now, Mayor Crandall. Oh, I've just been admiring this jar of yours. Quite old, isn't it? That jar? Oh, yes. Yes, it's an apothecary jar. It has a name on it. P. Borassosa. Was that the apothecary's name? Sounds more like a Latvian diplomat. <laughs> yes, it does. Well, uh, I, uh, I guess she had it. Had it? Uh, Miss Thorne, the, uh, curve. Oh, yes, yes, she had it. <laughs> you must look at women differently. Oh, I do. Other men look at women's eyes. I look at her bone structure. For instance, I could tell you within two pounds of what you weigh. Do I get it free of you, Miss? If I don't, Miss... Will you go to dinner with me? Well... Good. My guess is 110. Why, that's amazing. Right on the nose. Thanks. It's not true, but thanks very much. What do you mean? You weigh 120. Well, as a matter of fact, I haven't the slightest idea what I do weigh. As for dinner, it wouldn't be possible to go anywhere in weather like this. You have to eat sometime, don't you? Besides, we could continue the interview. Frankly, Mr. Corday, I'd like to get the interview over with as quickly as possible. Then let's go. There's a supper club I think you'd enjoy. You'll love this place, Mayor Crandall. The food is awful. But there's gambling in the back room, and there's uh, Gilda Laverne. Who is Gilda Laverne? Uh, there's her picture on the wall. Oh. I believe she's called a bubble dancer. That must be a great treat for you. Mr. Corday, good evening. Leonardo, I expect you to excel yourself tonight. We are honored with the mayor uh, of... Uh, 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 I mean, with my friend, uh, Madame P. Borat Sosa. Oh, such a privilege, Madame Sosa. I will bring the wine immediately. <laughs> really? What a ridiculous name. You seem to like it in my studio. Oh, which reminds me. We came here to continue the interview. Oh, yes, by all means. Now, about the statue of your father. Uh, your husband, I'm sorry. Uh, perhaps I could add a twinkle to the statue that I found lacking in those photographs. Mr. Corday, we'd like my husband exactly as he was. Oh, forgive me. Uh, tell me, uh, did your husband dance? Of course he danced. Well, shall we? Why not? What are you smiling at, Mr. Corday? Life is so full of surprises. I never thought I'd so enjoy having a mayor in my arms. Tell me, did your husband enjoy having a mayor in his arms? How could he? He was the mayor. Oh, of course. <laughs> Very confusing, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, oh, here's our table. Would you mind if we sat down again? Not at all. We'll have some wine. Mr. Corday, if I say something, you won't think I'm rude, will you? Your glass, please. Thank uh, you. About the uh, statue, Mr. Corday. I'm really a very good sculptor, Mrs. Crabbe. Yes, yes, but I simply cannot picture you in Brookhaven. You don't think I'm rude. On the contrary, I'm fascinated. Besides, you dislike Brookhaven intensely. But I'm beginning to feel a positive yearning for it. We'll drink to Brookhaven. I, I don't believe you understood me. You see, I just fired you. But I understood that this was simply an interview. You know, a personality and character. Well, I've come to a conclusion. Oh? Your personality definitely appeals to me. But may I suggest that you have just a tiny bit too much of character? You may suggest it, but... Oh. Oh, oh 
Oh, dear. Your wine. Right in my lap. What will I do? Well, I, I think the usual procedure is to retire to the powder room and dry out. It's uh, down that way, I think. Thank you. Oh, isn't it fortunate I came to New York and met you? Just think. I might have ordered you by mail. Ladies and gentlemen, Leonardo is proud to present that sensational big little star, Miss Gilda Laverne and her bubble dance. What happened to you? Oh, I spilled something on my dress, and I... Well, just take it off, honey, and I'll press it dry for take you. Take it off? This material, it draws all up out of shape if it dries on you. Oh, it does? Yes, ma'am. And you don't want to go out of here all out of shape, do you? Oh, no, I... Um, well, can you press it right away? I sure can. You just slip out of it, and I'll heat up the iron. That's it. <laughs> What's that? Let me see if it's what I think it is. Yeah, it's what I think. Here's your dress, honey. Will you please tell me what's going on? It's a raid, honey. You better follow me out this window. It's the third raid in three months. I could... Oh, a dress. Miss Laverne. No, that's my dress. Sorry, but I need it more than you do. Thanks, chum. You better duck out the window, too. My dress. Give that back to me at once. Come on, man. Okay, babe. We're waiting. <gasps> yeah, babe. You? What sort of a policeman are you anyway? Don't you realize now that Now, look, is... Gilda. Oh, you... You think that I'm the dancer. Well, you've made a ridiculous mi mistake. I I'm just a guest here. And since when are the guests been running around without their dresses on? I was standing right here with my dress in my hand oh, when sure. all of a sudden it went out through the window. Hey, Sarge, you got Laverne. Oh, this is most embarrassing. Officer, release this lady immediately. Everybody that works here gets pulled in, mister. But she doesn't work here. Do you know who she is? Well, please, She's... please, please. My, my name is P. Barat Sosa. Sure. I'm Latvian. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, Chauncey, back up the wagon. <laughs> Twenty-four hours have passed, and far from New York, from George Corday, bubble dancers, and policemen, Anne Crandall gratefully breathes again the calm, pure air of Brookhaven, Vermont. Oh, my, but it's good to be home again, Father. You look tired, Anne. Have any fun? Fun? Well, that's hardly what I went for. Where's Diana? She'll be right home. Well, what about the sculptor? Oh, Oh, the sculptor. Well, uh, he can't take the job. All booked up for years, practically. <laughs> we'll just have to get somebody else. What happened to you in New York? Happened? I, um, called you at the hotel, 7 o'clock. Last night, you weren't in. <laughs> well, I had to eat, didn't I? I called you again at 6 in the morning, you still weren't in. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I wasn't? No, you weren't. <laughs> Father. What is it? I was in jail. You know what I thought you said? I thought you said you were in jail. That's just what I did say. For giving an indecent performance. A what? Oh, 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 but I didn't. I, I didn't do anything. Father, the minute I saw him asleep on that couch, I knew that I should leave. What couch? In his studio, Mr. Corday. He was asleep when I got there and... And, uh, what? It thundered and woke him up. Oh, so it thundered. Jonathan again. Oh, I knew you'd say something ridiculous like that. But how did you get in jail? Well, I got in because I was Gilda Laverne, and I got out because I was P. Barat Sosa. Oh, oh, the police were very apologetic. Say that again, slowly. Sorry, darling, I'm not up to it. I'll see you after I unpack. <laughs> Awful, Mother. It's simply awful. Why isn't Mr. Corday coming? Oh, he's just too busy, dear. Oh, Mrs. Crandall. That's funny. What's funny, Jessie? Oh, your good black chest. The one you wore to New York. I just unpacked your bag, and, and it isn't Jessie, I told you that I would unpack. I've been unpacking for you for years. Oh, but, Mother, I had my heart set on Mr. Corday. Now, darling, he was positively ancient. Why... 
Why, he even had a beard. A beard all the way down to to here. Isn't that disgusting? A beard? Mm-hmm. Oh, Mother, we'd better go tell those people what a narrow escape we all had. He certainly sounds nauseating. People? What people? Well, why, the statue committee. They're downstairs. Well, I had to let them know you were home, didn't I? Oh, I'd say that that was debatable here. Please, we'll just have to get some other sculptor, that's all. But, Your Honor, if he was too old to take the job, I wouldn't think he'd have made an appointment to see you. (laughs) Oh, I think he would have enjoyed the work if he could have gotten it. Well, I guess when you're dealing with an artist, you never do know what'll happen. Uh, Well, good night, Mayor Crandall and Mr. Crandall. Let me open the door for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey! Why'd you slam the door? Uh, 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 nothing, Father. It's, it's only that when you open the door, the, the draft, it's, it's awful. Oh, there's somebody out there. There is? Well, for heaven's sake. <laughs> well, we'd all better run along, then. Good night. Good night. Oh, my. And that man, are you going to let him stand out there all night? Man? Oh! Well, come in. Thank you. Um... This is my daughter, Diana. How do you do? And this is my father-in-law, Mr. Crandall. I didn't catch the name. She didn't throw it. Uh, oh, it's, um, <laughs> it's Mr. Corday. This Mr. is Corday? Corday? I'm sorry I was rude just now, so but... So you're Corday. Here, have a cigar. Uh, Thanks, but I... Mother, got... you must not have gotten a good look at Mr. Corday at all. A, a beard, you said, down to here. Well, I, I thought, uh... You did have a beard, didn't you, Mr. Corday? A beard? Oh, yes, yes, I did, didn't I? I, I shaved it off. It, it's so much warmer here in Vermont than in New York. <laughs> so you're going to do the statue after all. And you'll stay right here with us, of course. Father, you know that we haven't any room. Oh, he can live in the carriage house and build a statue right there, and I can watch it grow day by day. Oh, please, Mother. A very practical idea. Come along, Corday. I'll get you settled. I threw a few things in the car. You know, materials for the statue. Uh, Just in case. Oh, Mother, just think. Oh, that was in back of a beard all the time, and you never even knew it. Oh, jeepers. Oh, jeepers. This carriage house, Mayor Crandall, is very nice. I like it. Look, Mr. Corday, I did not want to see you again. Why did you have to come here? To build a statue, of course. Doesn't it make any difference to you that I don't want Uh, to... Uh... What's that? What's what? Oh, oh, this? Uh, my little apothecary jar... I always take it with me wherever I go. Oh, you do. It has magic qualities. When I want to do something very badly, and uh, obstacles seem to arise, why, I just turn the jar around. And what do you see? P. Borasosa. Why, you... You blackmailer. Give me a week. If at the end of a week you say I don't fit into life at Brookhaven, I'll go. Is that fair? No. But if I don't let you stay, I'm to be exposed. Is that it? my night in jail. I promise to be no trouble at all. Oh, I'm helpless, Mr. Corday. Look, why do you want to stay here that badly? Madame Sosa, that's just what I want to find out. I don't know what you're beefing about, Corday. If you ask me, the statue's coming along fine. It's terrible. I I should be much farther along by now. I don't know about the statue. But you sure ought to be farther along with something else. I don't even want to work on it. You're jealous of him. Jealous of, of Jonathan? Ridiculous. But Jonathan's the best friend you've got. He knocked his own head off with a bowl of lightning. He did it so Ann would go to New York and meet you. <laughs> you didn't hear about that, did you? Uh, no, I can't say that I did. Why, he's as anxious to get Ann out of this rut as I am. You believe that? Of course I believe that. Don't tell me that Anne believes Jonathan is doing all. Well, she says she doesn't believe it, but she says it in a very funny voice. Amazing. There's that phonograph record again. Diane! Uh, Don't disturb her. Your granddaughter's keeping me happy at my work. She told me so. Her mother could do a much better job. 
Well, get going, George. Start nearing that cliff. Oh, for cow's sake, Diana, will you turn off that phonograph? Gilbert, if you're hanging around hoping for an invitation to dinner, you might as well give up. Don't worry. I wouldn't stay if you asked me. You make me sick to my stomach. Gilbert, leave that record alone. Oh, you've gotten so artistic lately since that, that old mud dauber came around you're here. You're the... only speaking of probably the world's greatest living artist, you know. Do you mind if I leave? I think I'm going to be sick. Well, aren't you going? Don't worry. I, uh, I don't suppose you'd want to go for a walk. A walk? Oh, really, Gilbert? Do you think I'm exactly dressed for a walk? I'll tell you what you're dressed like, Diana Crandall. What you're dressed like is enough to make a horse laugh. <laughs> Diana, isn't that a lovely tune? Oh, yeah. You know something, Mother? This is Mr. Corday's absolutely favorite piece. Really? Then turn it off. Oh, Mother. Diana, oh, what have you done to your hair? What have you done to yours? Mine? Oh, it makes you look so young, Mother. Is that bad? Well, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but... Well, I think it makes you look awfully icky. Well, I think you look a little icky yourself. High heels and a party dress, really. Mother, do you feel all right? Why, certainly. Well, you used to be so quiet, but... Well, lately you've been so kind of... Leapy. <laughs> what a ridiculous word. Where are you going? Into the kitchen. I want to talk to Jessie. Jesse, I'll be at the stone cutters with Mr. Corday. We have to choose a pedestal for the statue. It's going to rain again. Oh, possibly. Oh, Al, don't bother to tell Diana. He's been trying to get you alone ever since he came here. Well, he's finally made. Oh, I wish you wouldn't be so silly, Jesse. I might give you the same advice, Mayor Crandall. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we should have taken the car. How can we possibly walk home in weather like this? We can't. So your conscience should be thoroughly comfortable. Well, it isn't. What are you afraid of? Please. Just... Okay, then? No. Yes. Oh. oh, I don't know. I've never been so mixed up in my life before. A week ago, you asked me why I came here. Well, I can answer that now. And I'm here with you. No. I know exactly when it happened. When you were telling me about the dignity of the Crandalls. And look at me, please. I can't. Why can't you? Because when I do, the, well, the most ridiculous thing happens. I get all... lazy. Oh, I just can't think. I'm absolutely blank. You're absolutely wonderful. Am I really? And I'm going to kiss you. I... Diana. Send her home. Oh, won't you ever be sensible? Mother, I've been simply searching for you all over. Coming, darling. Diana, how nice of you to pick us up. Well, how'd you do, Corday? Get me where? That was a very significant rain this afternoon. Forget it, Grandpa. Oh, a but, huh? Diana? Uh-huh. Diana. Well, I'm not surprised. When Jonathan died, Anne promised Diana she'd never marry again. So if you ask me, your problem's really Diana, not Anne. You mean all I have to do is talk to Diana? You make it sound so simple. It, it's a cinch. Grandpa, I'm taking everybody to the movies tonight. You and Anne and Diana and Gilbert. I'll show you tonight how simple it is. Well, that was the best movie I've seen in years. Personally, I thought it was tripe. You and me both, Mr. Crandall. Oh, Gilbert, you always have to spoil everything. Now, children. Well, goodbye. Diana and I are walking home alone. 
We are? Hey! Yes, hey! Sorry, but uh, we have a great deal to talk about. I was going to get her a hot fudge sundae. Gilbert, do you want to do something very nice for me? Me? For you? <laughs> yes. Buy me that hot fudge sundae. Honest? Honest. I haven't had one in years. Well, good night. You know something? What? I've always, well, you know, just thought that you were Diana's mother. <laughs> well, I am. Oh, I know. I mean, I never exactly noticed what you looked like before. <laughs> Why, Gilbert! See you later, Father. Oh, good night. Gosh, come on, Mrs. Crandall. And I didn't realize until tonight, Diana, that you're not at all the child that everyone seems to think you are. You didn't? You're a woman. An intelligent, understanding woman. I am? Diana, when a man falls in love with a woman, really in love, well, he wants to marry her. And if the woman is also in love with the man... Go on. Nothing should stand in their way. Don't you agree? Oh, I should say so. Oh, Mother and I made a promise once. That's just what I'm talking about. We promised never to get married and leave each other. You know, like a suicide pact. Exactly like a suicide pact. The, the killing of everything that a mature woman needs to live and be happy. Oh, that's beautiful. You want me to break that pact, don't you? I want you to free a woman's heart, Diana. Don't you see the difference? Oh, I do, I do. It just goes to show what a shrewd analysis of character you are. You do understand, don't you? Well, naturally. I don't have to be hit over the head. <laughs> you make me very happy, Diana. Oh, I just can't wait to tell Mother. May I? Oh, by all means, tell your mother. Oh, Mother, you've got to listen to me very carefully And, oh, Mother, I love you very much Well, I love you too, dear That's what makes it kind of sad Only he's so wonderful Gilbert Oh, Mr. Corday Only I guess I'll have to get used to calling him George If I'm going to marry him If you... If you what? Oh, I, I know it's a shock, but he did it so beautifully. Did what? Oh, he told me about women and love and things. And, and he's so right. Nobody has any right to stand in one's way. In whose way? Mine. Oh, Mother, you won't, will you? Diana, are you trying to tell me that George Corday asked you to marry him? Oh, well, not in certain words, but from the way he looked and the things he said, oh... Oh, I'm so absolutely happy I could do flips. You don't mind, do you? Well, it, it is a bit of a surprise. <laughs> oh, Gilbert just simply died. Gilbert's not the only one who's going to die. Oh, it's so hysterically wonderful, isn't it? Hysterically. Father. Yes, dear. You come with me. Now? Where? To the carriage house. We're calling on my new son-in-law. George Corday's courtship of Anne Crandall has suffered something of a setback. Having explained his feelings to Anne's daughter, George is now more slightly perturbed to discover that Diana is under the impression that he's proposed to her. But Anne, Grandpa, how could Diana possibly have thought I that... I don't know. I only know that that child is absolutely dippy in love with you. That's fantastic. What... What will I do? Well, let's see. Maybe you could be too old for her. That idea seemed to nauseate her once. I am too old for you her. You certainly are. How's your stomach? I beg your pardon? Your stomach. Maybe there's something wrong with it. Kids don't like sickly people. I think that's a lovely idea. Huh? Just droop a little. You know, pretend you can't eat. Oh, I think there's an old shawl I could let you have. Uh, but... In other words... Act your age for a change. Well, I'll do anything, anything at all. Diana, 
Why would she think he'd marry her in the first place? Why not? He proposed to me tonight, too. Now, Anne... Oh, I knew if you came here, something would happen. But frankly, I didn't think it would end up with my being your mother-in-law. Well, good night, son. Mon cher diary, George and I have been engaged now for two whole days. And I've just found out something. Poor George has a stomach condition. He's been so creative, he's even ruined his health. The idea of a grown man making such a fuss about eating at ten o'clock at night. But I was starving to death. Diana won't let me eat anything. Did you try a restaurant? I certainly did. She's told them you've given strict orders not to feed me. Oh, you men are so helpless. Shall I show you how helpless? George, please. Darling, don't you realize we're alone, actually alone. Making love to your mother-in-law. <laughs> George, now, now stop. What about Diana? Diana belongs to Gilbert. She doesn't know that. I'll talk to him. First, I want to talk to you. And I'm trying to tell you I love you. What do you know? I hear bells. Oh, it's the doorbell. Let it ring. You're forgetting that I'm the mayor. Uh, oh, yes, I, I, I did forget. And what's more important, I think for a moment you forgot too. Oh, please. What if someone found me alone here with you? In your own kitchen? Well, well, it would take some explaining and... Oh, I'll be right back. Wait here. Why, Gilbert. Hello. I know it's kind of late, Mrs. Crandall, but could I come in? Of course. What's the matter, Gilbert? Well, I can't eat anymore. I can't sleep either. There seems to be a kind of epidemic of that around here. You know, this situation with Diana has made me very unhappy, too. Perhaps you and I could... Could what? Well... I've been noticing you a lot lately, Gilbert. I've been noticing you, too. <laughs> oh, you have? Uh-huh. Gilbert, sometimes I get so impatient with you. You do? If you're in love with a woman, you ought to say so and not just sit around in corners looking at her. A woman just can't stand that, you know. She can't? Certainly not. So she turns to someone else. Turns to who? Well, in this case, to Mr. Corday. But he's going to marry Diana. Well, yes, that's what I want. Uh, uh, you don't have to turn to anybody, Mrs. Anne. What? You're so smart and, and pretty and everything that... Gilbert! Well, I didn't know, did I? But I'm not dumb anymore, and, and just to prove it to you... <laughs> there. Oh, good night. Won't Diana die? <laughs> well, I guess I'd better be going now. <laughs> yes, I, I guess you'd better. <laughs> well, good night. <laughs> oh. Anne, Anne, darling, what's the matter? Nothing, only I... I think that I'm engaged to Gilbert. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Crandall. Eating breakfast, huh? Gilbert, I've been wanting to talk to you. Don't you think it's time you got up on your hind legs and acted like a man? Oh, I, uh, I did. You did? Good night, I sure did. <laughs> well, now... Ah. Good morning, Mr. Crandall. And Gilbert, congratulations. I think you and Anne will make a perfect couple. Uh, uh, why? Oh, good morning. <gasps> oh, hello, Gilbert. Hello, uh, hello, Diana. Hello. And how do you feel this morning, Diana? All right. Good. I just couldn't wait to tell her, Gilbert. Well, how do you like it? Oh, I think it's perfectly sweet, except... Yes? Well, there's kind of a disgusting difference in their ages, that's all. Oh, not nearly as much as between you and George, dear. 
Will somebody please tell me what this is? Why, Anne and Gilbert are engaged to be married. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, uh, Gilbert, George and I talked it over, and we think it's so selfish of us not to share our happiness with the whole town. Ma'am? <laughs> so we've decided to announce our joint engagements tomorrow. You know, at the unveiling of the new statue. Well, good night. I haven't even asked my mother yet. <laughs> but it would be so much more fun to surprise her. Don't you think so? If you don't mind, I think I'll go out and come in again. This just can't be happening. <laughs> don't you feel a draft, Diana, dear? Would you get me my... Shawl, please. Shawl? Oh, and Gilbert, you'll find my pills in the desk. Would you mind? Pills? Oh, naturally. Before eating, you know. Well, look where you're going, Gilbert. I'm trying to get George's shawl. Oh, I don't see anything to cry about. Oh, I suppose you don't think it makes a person nervous to be engaged. Good night. I know that, don't I? And if it makes you so darn nervous, well, what are you going to marry him for? Gilbert Parker, I'd rather be dead than live in this house with you as a stepfather. <laughs> now go and get your fiancé's pill. Hello, hello, is that you, Buchanan? This is Jonathan Crandall, senior. You'll be in your office in 30 minutes. I'm going to give your newspaper a story that'll set this sanctimonious town right on its self-righteous ear. You heard me in 30 minutes. Oh, Mother, in headlines four inches high, Mayor Crandall in New York jail. Well, how could they possibly have found out? And doing a strip tease. Well, holy cow. If you all pipe down for two seconds, I'll tell you how it happened. Father. I told Buchanan the whole story. I did it. So, Shelby, you told the newspaper about, about Anne being arrested? I certainly did, and then I got drunk. Father, do you, do you realize that this is the end of me as mayor? Something had to be done to blast you out of this town, didn't it? Well, I blasted it. Mother. Oh, darling, I'm terribly sorry. Well, good night. Mr. Corday. Yes, dear? Don't you dear me. I want you to know that I expect you, if you have any honor whatsoever, to marry my mother. You do? You do? Please don't consider me at all. I'm willing to make any sacrifice. So am I. Oh, good night. So am I. I'm sorry, Mother, but you'll just have to take the consequences, even if he does have a stomach condition. <laughs> His shawl is on the hook behind the door. Now I'm going up to see my poor grandfather. Hey, can I go? He's my grandfather, too. Isn't he? Your grandfather. Well, good night. I almost married her, didn't I? And I'll probably end up marrying you, won't I? I'm, I'm just dumb enough. <laughs> Why, thank you, Gilbert. That's the very nicest proposal I ever had. Well, Anne, I guess I'll have to make an honest woman out of you. Oh, it'll be a sweet wedding. The bride wore a lovely arrangement of tar and feathers. Oh, darling. You think I'm exaggerating. You don't know a small town. The mayor's supposed to keep her shirt on. Mrs. Crandall! Mrs. Crandall! Yes, Jessie? Oh, they've, they've just broken the window. So, I was exaggerating, was I? What window? Oh, not our windows. In the newspaper office. Oh, Mrs. Crandall, everybody in town seen that newspaper this morning. And everybody's waiting for you now, the statue. They want to give you a vote of confidence. What the... We all agreed that no Crandall could possibly have acted like that. And they're waiting for you. Well, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Very nice. Very comfortable. But we're leaving here just the same. Leaving here? We're getting married, you know. But I... Someplace warm would be nice, you know, for my condition. But that's not possible right now. Why not? Well, with the election coming up and everything, I'm running. Running where? Against Mr. Buchanan for mayor. Sorry, but you can't. Look, I I've got to go to the unveiling. Please come with me. You'll feel very proud, won't you? Going out there and letting them cheer you. But you did get arrested, didn't you? 
Well, yes. And they but... won't admit it, will they? Not for one minute. They say no Crandall would act like that, and if they did, they wouldn't believe it. Awful. What's awful about it? What you're trying to say is that you and I simply don't look at anything alike. You paid me a great compliment when you said I wouldn't fit into Brookhaven. But you do. You have. I don't. I've hidden and whispered and explained until I want to go on a mountain and yell, I love Anne and she loves me. Oh, George, you don't understand. After we're married, well, it, it would be different then. More respectable, is that it? Oh, please come with me. Why? I want to tell them that I'm going to marry you. To see if they approve? No, Anne. You know, I once told you, you had too much character. I've changed my mind. You haven't nearly enough. Then you wouldn't want to stay now in any case. Well, Mr. Corday, at least let me thank you for a lovely statue. Consider it a going away present, Mayor Crandall. Thank you. I'll mail you your check tomorrow. Oh, you'll find a small amount added for amusement tax. <laughs> Just don't stand there watching it rain. If we're going to rot here together, Anne, we may as well be gay about it. <laughs> oh, I... I just don't feel good. Of course you don't. Maybe now you realize that most women could live eight lifetimes and still not get a chance at a fellow like George Corday. Well, I have everything just the way I wanted it. You're lying again. Oh, I know it. Oh, Father, isn't this ridiculous? It is. And I'm pretty annoyed at Jonathan, too, you know. Jonathan? Well, he shouldn't have started something if he couldn't finish it. I never would have gone to New York in the first place, would I, if he hadn't lost his head. And now he's standing out there, just like the rock of Gibraltar. Mrs. Crandall. Oh, Mrs. Crandall. Oh, now what? One of your constituents, undoubtedly, with a flooded cellar. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, 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 Mayor Crandall. Oh, come on in, everybody. A delegation. Mr. Witherspoon, why, why, you're as white as a ghost. A uh, ghost? Oh, 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 your honor, oh, don't use that word. It almost killed me, your honor. I was just walking past. I was just minding my own business. And wham! What happened? Jonathan's head. It fell off again. Oh, no. It certainly looks as if oh. something's bigger than we are. It's got a hand in this, Mayor. Uh, don't you think so? Oh, yes, yes, it does, doesn't it? Oh, it, it, it would be probably be downright dangerous for me to um, continue as mayor. I certainly wouldn't want the responsibility of daring the supernatural. I'll uh, resign immediately. Yeah, uh, will uh, one of you please report that right now to the newspaper? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, good night, then. Good night. Oh, good night, and thank you. Well? Oh, Father, who says there aren't any miracles left in the world? I'm free. Hey, where are you going? Jonathan snapped off his noggin again. Oh, I, I saw him when he did it. Did what? Who? That artist fella. The night he left. He fixed it so it would fall off. He did? And you didn't say anything? The mayor believes in miracles. Letter, I say. Why, Jesse, you're a human being. <laughs> well, he don't call for you to be insulting, Mr. Crandall. <laughs> Jesus, Mr. Corday, do you have to whistle that tune all the time? Oh, uh, frankly, Miss Thorne, it, it's getting me down, too. And so is this rain. Well, let's get back to work. Oh, well, pardon me. I'm the ex-Mayor Crandall. The people who sent me thought that I might have just what you're looking for. Have I? Well, <laughs> good night! <laughs> the cast tonight were Carl Young as George, Herb Butterfield as Grandpa, Norman Elson as Diana, Gil Stratton as Gilbert, and William Conrad, Francis Robinson, Lillian Randolph, Barney Phillips, Hard McNear, Noreen Gamille, and Eddie Marr. Our radio play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was composed and directed by Rudy Schrager.